tinker time. So today uh, we're going to be working on this, my Thunderbird. Um, it started off with something really simple. I heard the squeaking under the hood and way down in there somewhere is the tensioner or the idler and over here is the tensioner. So I started taking this apart a couple weeks ago and realized that taking apart those, you might as well go ahead and change out the belt and you might as well change out these manifold hoses, which are insane because there's like one hose that goes into four. So I might as well change those out since they're original to the car, which also gives me a coolant flush, which while I'm in there, I might as well change out the water pump that's original to the car. Even though it's only got 59,000 miles, it's got, it's 18 years old. So what started out life as a simple, hey, let's just change out a tensioner pulley like you do on a small block Chevy in five minutes. This turned into what's going to be a couple of hours of while you're in there. So sit tight, relax, and we're going to fast forward to a couple of time lapses of me taking this apart. But the part you don't really have to see because it's pretty obvious is I'm going to take off that engine cover, this front end cover, and then we'll get started with this intake pipe. So sit tight and we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so this is the top of the engine. This is the front over here. This is the back firewall over there. Uh, engine covers off, uh, front splash covers off. Now we have to take apart the air box that is all from here to here to here. This all comes off in one big assembly. Uh, this is the PCV hose, I believe. And you just squeeze and pull, squeeze and pull. Otherwise you'll break it. So just make sure you squeeze the right part and just jiggle, it'll pop right off. This can stay, all this can stay. Um, <clears throat> once we get this off, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to start working on the radiator hoses and draining the coolant. And let's fast forward to time-lapse. There we go. A bit of a chore. Okay. Let's see. Ideally, what I want to do is drain. Oh, that was leaking. Okay, uh, battery change later. Uh, coolant still draining <laughs> underway. You need a hose that comes off a nipple on the passenger side of the car. There's a drain there. It's a three quarter uh, nylon bolt of sorts. Uh, you can use a uh, Allen key or you can use a three quarter socket. I chose the three quarter socket. Do not pull out the bolt too far it out just enough so it starts draining down your hose otherwise you end up with this yeah see yeah i might have had a little boo-boo there but at least i caught it early so anyway um from what i remember ford coolant is actually a gold color not green which is why it looks like bayou water especially if you're from texas louisiana it's pretty gross kind of smells like it too tastes a little bit like it too but anyway uh we'll be back after this drains and i can take the hoses off and try to figure out how the hell i'm going to get to the clamps all right so this is where i'm at i have wrestled out both belts without mangling the clamps which was a bit of a chore and i got my breaker bar here on the tensioner but before i take the tensioner loose and take the belt off i need to take these little water pump pulley bolts off first because i'm changing the water pump and hopefully i'll be able to do that without having to take the thermostat housing off 
Uh, so let me get that apart and then I'll move the camera to show you if I can get in there or not. If I can't, then my day just got a whole lot longer. Anyway, sit tight and we'll get to that part next. I'd time lapse this, but it's just me cursing and wrestling stupid crap all the time. All right, you're gonna have to pardon me because I'm a goddamn mess. So anyway, uh, this is the idler pulley, which actually feels okay, but I'm gonna change it anyway because I'm in there. This was the tensioner pulley that I had to break off of this tensioner, which the spring is still good, so that's why I'm reusing it. And this, according to Amazon and according to Dorman, is the replacement pulley. This part number, you notice they're both the same because it says that they both work for this car. Now here's the catch. See that? See that? They're not the same size. This new one is slightly larger, but not by much. And this one, it's quite a bit larger. But that's what the tensioner's for, right? It'll kick it out. I can kick it out far enough to make up the slack. So I'm not really worried about it because yes, it does fit. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, is I'm gonna dry fit this before I put it all back together. But first, I gotta change the water pump, which is down in here. And I believe I can get to all the bolts in there. So let's go take a little walk over here and grab my new water pump and take a look and see where the bolts are and where they line up. I'm happy to report that I have not had a, I haven't cut myself yet, which is something I usually do a lot of when I work on my car, just because I'm in a hurry. But with age comes wisdom and with wisdom comes patience, I guess. The hell do I know? Sorry, the camera work and do a crap. So, here's the new pump, and it looks like it is oriented like this in the car, sorry, like this in the car, this, sorry, my, I'm looking at my phone. So that's going to go in like that, and five bolts hold it on, and it appears that yes, I should be able to get to all of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go fetch the gasket. I'm going to put a little thin layer of RTV on both sides of it, put that in there, get this joker back together, fill up the coolant, and then I'll show you the bleeding procedure that I just learned today. How about that? So uh, cue the time lapse, I guess. Let me bump out and disconnect the mic, set it back up, and I will try to do the time lapse if the batteries hold out. All right, I don't know if the mic is on, but everything, there's been a lot of bolts that are eight millimeters, so it looks like all the bolts on the water pump are eight millimeter too. I'm using three eighths drive just because I don't have a short extension for quarter inch drive. But they shouldn't put up too much of a fight. I mean, yes, it's original to the car, but yeah, it's 18 years old, but it also has only 59,000 miles. So it doesn't have, it doesn't have the mileage of grind and beating on it its whole life you know what I mean oh and the other thing I should note is that I've been trying desperately to avoid taking off the electric fan because there's a couple of bolts that I'm not sure I can get to so if you're wondering why I've been working around it that's the reason <clears throat> all right so once they break loose it should be nice and easy sailing from here I'm gonna hit it with, let's hit it with power, if I can get the tool in there.
it is. One water pump. One water pump. Uses O rings, huh? The new one does not use O rings. Seems okay. I got a new one, so I'm gonna use it. All right, so I'm assuming the mic still works. So the pump, I just kind of tapped it out, persuaded it, didn't really beat on it. You probably heard me just doing light taps. <sighs> Once it broke free, it's slightly different, where it uses like an O-ring type thing. Um, but the new one came with the gasket, so I'm not worried about it. Matter of fact. Okay, so the plate for the old one just popped right out. I'm going to compare this to the new one, and I may use this one because it's more substantial. I'll just clean it up, put a little RTV on it to make up for the, uh, well, if it had O-rings, they're chewed up now, so <laughs> I didn't do it. There was like a seal that kind of started to give around the edge. The hammering didn't have anything to do with it either. I've got a lot of water on the ground now, so putting the car back together is going to be really fun, let me tell you. So anyway, uh, okay, so that's off. Let me get everything dried up and cleaned up, and then I'll go on to the next step as soon as I figure out how I'm going to do it. All right, so let me take you for a ride. Right here. The new water pump is in. Where is it? It's in there somewhere. Right there. There it is. Five eight millimeter bolts. They're all the same length, so it didn't matter. Just tightened them until they were snug and then quarter turned them. I put RTV on both sides of that little thin metal gasket because it was thinner than the original one I took out. And the original water pump that was original to the car. Can I use the word original anymore? Anyway. So the idler is in. I got the tensioner back together with the bigger pulley. Just slightly bigger. It's not that much bigger, like two millimeters. And then that'll bolt back in down there. Uh, down there. It's keyed so you can't screw it up. But I remember I gotta weave the belt in before I get that in. So that's gonna be next. And thankfully I drew a diagram before I started all this. And I will put a picture of it in the video at the corner somewhere so you can see how it looks. But uh, sit tight and I'll go ahead and do that. So, it's not the greatest view, I know, but it's the only one I got because I lost my tripod. Hopefully I'll do better when I do the wheel bearings tomorrow. Sit tight. All right, so, contrary to popular belief, the Dorman pulleys are obviously not correct. I ended up having to only use one of them because the other one is too big and the belt didn't work. And even that one's slightly too big and the belt that they sent me was grossly smaller. So one of the nice things about a while you're in there situation is if you are replacing parts just for the sake of replacing parts, then you're not, but your back's not against the wall. But this belt was still pretty good. So I'm just gonna run it with that in the meantime and chew someone's ass for selling me a belt that didn't fit because their application guide is garbage. So anyway, next is move all the clamps from the old hoses to the new one. These are for the oil cooler here. And then it goes in this orientation like this. And then I'll do it to the other one. And we'll start putting it back together. And then I'll show you how to bleed the system. So tinker time, day two and uh, was defeated by freaking hose clamps. So, we're back on the bird. All my spare parts are in there, which I hate doing. And I was defeated because of these stupid clamps. Because the original ones are too thick, and the hoses are thicker than the originals, 
So that's what I get to deal with today. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll take a little break, put all this together, and then I'll show you the, the fill and draining or the fill and bleeding procedures. So sit tight. There's the new water pump down here with the belt already installed. The idler pulley is slightly bigger. So I had to put the original tensioner pulley back on because it's smaller than the replacement. Otherwise the belt wouldn't fit and the belt they sold me was too short too. Yay. So apparently if your belt number ends in 610, it's the wrong one. Just keep that in mind. All right, so uh, sit tight. Let me get all this back together. Basically I got to clamp here, clamp down there, and then make sure that this reaches, this little bracket reaches this bolt. And then that one, and that one, and then do the clamp under this one here. Already did the ones on the oil cooler down there, which were super fun, let me tell you. And what we'll do is we'll fill the bottom half of the engine through here, fill up the radiator hoses and stuff, and we'll do the top of the engine over there. And then I'll show you how to bleed it, hopefully, without ruining my car. <laughs> Sit tight, I gotta set up the camera. All right, so air box is back on, hoses are all tightened up, back in. So now we're gonna talk about cooling and bleeding. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill here, this water neck behind the thermostat, to fill up everything up front, the radiator and the hoses and the oil cooler and all that stuff, right? Then I'm gonna go to this bottle over here and I'm gonna fill it up over the line because it's obviously gonna be low on water. And we're gonna start the engine you're gonna turn on the heater. I got dual zone climate control. So what you do is you turn on both to 90 degrees, turn the blower on medium so the heater core opens up, so the water goes in through there, and you just run the engine. So once you start running it, the engine's gonna warm up, obviously, the coolant's gonna to start to heat up, the thermostat's gonna start doing its magic. And what I will do is, this is the bleeder screw here, and what you'll do is you'll stick a towel underneath and you will crack that screw open about a turn and a quarter and you'll see it start to drip. Now, what I was, from my understanding, what you do is you just leave it open, leave the engine running until that screw drips out water constantly. So there's gonna be a little bit of a mess, so make sure you put a towel there to keep the water away from everything. But as soon as that starts flowing freely, the system should be bled. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, it's gonna be during the engine running, so I'll probably just cut it off here, but that's essentially it. Um, notes of my experience, the, the original clamps would have worked, but the aftermarket hoses are slightly thicker and longer. The Gates hoses, despite the fact that once upon a time, when I was in my 20s, I used to be a manager at an O'Reilly Auto Parts, Gates hoses are kinda crappy for this particular car. They don't fit right. So I got like a little baby kink there and a little baby kink there, but I don't think it's gonna affect anything too badly. And I did trim them because they were slightly longer. I had to trim a quarter inch off the oil cooler lines. I had to true up the edge over here to the thermostat housing. And that was it. The only original clamps I used were for the oil cooler and the third little T down here, somewhere over here. There's a little T back there. So that's that, but uh, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, I'll, I'm gonna try to do this better, but this was a two-day project instead of a one because of stupid clamps. And I'm not a big fan of these chintzy clamps, but you know what, they fit, so. Um, I'm too beat, but the next tinkering video should be me, me replacing the front wheel bearings, and hopefully the camera angle will be better, and hopefully the darn batteries won't die every 20 minutes. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, once I get this bled out, I'm gonna put the covers back on and it should be good to go. And hopefully there won't be any stupid squeaking noises anymore. It should be good for another 18 years. All right, take it easy. We'll see you next time.